When I pull up to the dinner wearing a $50,000 watch and a $10,000 outfit, the waiters always ask me, what the hell do I do for a living? When I roll up to my friend's house in my blacked out Lamborghini Urus, their heads all snap and they ask me if I'm dealing drugs or doing something illegal. When I sign the papers for a $2.7 million property in cash, the realtor looks at me in disbelief. When I surprise my parents with a six figure check, they burst out in tears wondering what in the hell happened to their little boy over the last couple of years. I feel like kind of cringe talking about this stuff because on the inside, I still am that kid five years ago, negative $13 in my bank account, dead broke, begging the bus driver to give me a ride home from school to my cramped one bedroom student accommodations. But yeah, it's it's been a wild ride to say the least over the past five years. And it's about that time that I gave you guys my full story and held nothing back. This is a story of how I went from completely broke to multi-millionaire in less than four years while only using a phone, laptop, and Wi-Fi connection. You see, I grew up in a small fishing village in a suburb just outside of Vancouver, Canada. And my dad picked up and moved from Kenya, Africa, all the way to Canada to give his children an opportunity at a better life. He worked his ass off to give me and my two brothers all the opportunity we could have ever asked for growing up. You see, we didn't grow up poor. In fact, with both of my parents working, we were actually considered upper middle class. We had a decent sized home. And above all, my parents gave us the opportunity to play in sports teams and do things outside of just go to school. But boy, did I let those privileges get to my head. See, I didn't care much about school. I was that kid who was skipping classes, who was just always fixated on playing sports. I played on all the school's teams, soccer, volleyball, basketball, track, you name it. And I had a promising career going in soccer outside of school as well. It was my dream to go play at a Div 1 college in the US and my dream school was Stanford. By the time I was 16 years old, I decided to go all in and make this a reality. I vividly remember one summer training for six or seven hours every single day ahead of the biggest tournament in my life. This was the San Diego, California Surf Cup. And the sidelines would be packed with scouts from every single division one college across the nation. This was my opportunity and I was gonna stop at nothing to make it. First game in, 20 minutes in, I fell to the floor with the worst injury of my life. I remember planting my leg and going to kick the ball, but at the same time, a player from the other team came across and their knee struck the inside of my knee. Looking down in horror, I saw my kneecap hanging on the outside of my leg and I basically passed out from the pain that I was in. And when I had woken up, the doctor was telling me that it'll be at least eight months before I can touch a soccer ball again. Let alone, I wouldn't even be able to walk for the next few weeks and I might not even be able to play contact or competitively ever again. My heart sank. For the first time in my life, I have been humbled bad. I bawled my eyes out for the rest of the night and the days thereafter. And after I returned home from that trip and I went to school, I completely lost my identity. I didn't even know who I was anymore because I had nothing going for me outside of sports. I was damaged, broken, lost. I didn't even fit in with my old friends anymore. Felt like everything I had ever known, everything I'd ever dreamt of had all come crumbling down in front of me on that one day. But I think this is where my entrepreneurial instincts first kicked in. You see, I had sold stuff like duct tape wallets, pixie sticks, the occasional lemonade stand back when I was a child. But this time around, I got my hands on some fireworks. For those of you who are familiar, they were skyrockets and I was buying them in bulk and selling off the small packs for $20 a piece. I was making hundreds of dollars a week running this business out of my locker at school until I got busted by my school principal and expelled from my school for dangerous weapons and explosives. You see, on top of the fireworks business that I was operating in my locker, I also brought to school these custom-made pocket knives that I was buying from the night market and then selling to kids in my class. That day, when my parents had to come into the school in the middle of the day and pick me up from the principal's office, they didn't even say a word to me. As I lay there that night, I remember just hearing from down the stairs my mom bawling her eyes out the entire night. And that was when I knew that this time it it wasn't just a small screw up in my life or a little setback. I had done something in which had major consequences that was gonna haunt me for the rest of my life. No way was I gonna get into university now. All of my dad's hard work, his entire life of giving me the opportunity opportunity 
to go to upper level education had come crashing down. I was officially at rock bottom. No, I was below rock bottom. I was a prisoner in my childhood bedroom that couldn't do anything that a normal 15 or 16 year old kid should be able to do. And on top of that, my parents wouldn't even look at me. At this point in my life, it truly felt like there was no way out and there was little reason for me to continue on. And I learned the art of a good plan. You see, I mapped out this master plan on how I was gonna get my life back on track. The mission was simple. I was gonna do whatever it takes to get my high school education. Then I get a sales job, one day buy that house with the white picket fence and live happily ever after. Except without all the fancy education, sports teams and all of that. That ship had long sailed for me. So I started by emailing the school district. I was emailing my old principal. I was just trying to get in contact with anybody that I could who could give me one more lifeline. And I got no response, but I stayed persistent and avoided the constant thoughts of just hanging in the towel on my pathetic existence. And then one morning, I woke up from an email from the head of the entire school district that manages all the schools in our entire city. And they invited me to come in for a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Now in the meeting, they were extremely skeptical. But after reviewing my case and realizing that I was a good kid that just made a series of bad decisions, they re-enrolled me to the same school that I went and gave me a second chance at completing my high school education. Now when I returned, I became a different person. I didn't talk to anyone. I didn't do anything outside of school and studying. My head was in the textbooks 24 seven. And this is when I slowly started to learn that with the right goal, the right plan and enough dedication, I might actually be able to do anything. Within three to four months, I became the top student in pretty much every class that I was taking. Total nerd, showed up, aced my tests, went home, studied some more, didn't talk to anybody. I was on a mission. And then one day, my principal called me into the office and my stomach flipped about a hundred times over. I thought to myself, oh God, Nathan, what have you done this time? But it turns out that he was impressed, extremely impressed, and he hadn't seen anything like the transformation that I had just made. So much so that he wiped the expulsion off of my record to give me a second chance at going to university. And I remember leaving the office that day in tears. As soon as I got home, my mom had already heard the news. She was crying. I gave her a big hug. At that moment, it truly felt like I could do anything. God had just done the impossible. In fact, a couple months later, my parents started re-enrolling me in sports. And although I wasn't chasing the same dream anymore, I had a great last season in my final year of school, played well, scored a 93% academic average in senior year, and got into six out of the six universities that I applied for. By this point, I had a completely new identity. I'd realized that I was actually kind of smart when I put my mind to it. But a Bachelor of Commerce program at a university? <sighs> This was a whole different level. This shit was gonna be tough. So in the first month at my new school, the University of Victoria, I went all in studying. And I remember on the day we were getting our first exam back in the lecture hall of over 250 kids, the professor started reading off the statistics to the exam. 66% class average, 48 students scored below 50%. The top student managed to score 97%. And I remember just sitting there in my seat, just praying to God that I wasn't one of those students that failed. When my exam finally got to me, I took a deep breath and I turned over the page. Right before my eyes, I saw the two numbers, nine, seven. Ninety-seven percent. I was the top scorer in my first exam in university in a class of over 250 people. I couldn't believe it. I ran back home to my cramped student accommodation and the first person that I called was my mom. She was overjoyed and couldn't be more proud of me, but more importantly than that, I was finally proud of myself, a feeling that I hadn't felt in years. I was proud of that kid that was prisoner in his childhood bedroom after becoming expelled and putting his head down and figuring out a solution and a way out, even with the world pressed up against him. A few months went by, the scores kept piling in. I was rocking straight A pluses across the board in my first year in university. I was starting to learn faster and faster. Concepts were coming easier to me. And with some extra time on my hands, I found my entrepreneurial instincts kicking in once again in my life. I began incessantly searching Searching the internet for ways to make money online, came across YouTubers like Bia Heza and Jordan Welch, people that are no older than me, no smarter than me, no more talented, they weren't given any handouts, who were making millions of dollars just from a laptop. Could I be like them, I started to think? Is this really possible? The rational side of me said there was no way. It has to be a scam. These kids must be extremely smart or talented. They must have had handouts. Somebody must have showed them exactly what to do. There's just no way this exists. But somehow, for some reason, I managed to block out all of those thoughts 
and I dove in head first. You see, the first business that I started was an agency. Coming from a big city in Vancouver to a small town in Victoria, I noticed that there was a lot of mom and pop shops that had pretty much zero online presence. And growing up as a Gen Z, I had experience with running Instagram and Facebook, and I thought, how difficult can this be? I'll set up social media accounts, I'll build a website, I'll run Facebook lead generation ads for all these businesses and start to build them a bit of a buzz and community and hype towards their online presence that will hopefully funnel in more customers to their physical locations. And these were gyms, yoga studios, new cafes opening, even roofing contractors. I was ready to work with anyone. Little did I know, this would be the start of everything for me. And although I was learning all these skills at a rapid rate and I felt that I would be a very valuable asset to any business who would take me on, I faced rejection after after rejection. I kept hearing the same things like, why should I trust a kid to run my marketing? And what experience do you have? Show me the proof. Show me something you've done for somebody else. And I had nothing. And this is where I had to learn the art of sales. I had to adapt my approach and play into my strengths or rather turn my weaknesses into my strengths. I reworked my offer and allowed for two weeks of free work to show them the results. On top of that, my pitch changed. I started to say, hey, listen, you know, I'm an 18 year old kid at business school. I'm doing extremely well. I'm passionate about this stuff and I wanna take my next steps. I wanna help a real business like yours generate some results. Let me do the work for you for free. Give me two weeks. I'll spend my own money out of pocket on ads. And if I get you some results, then can we talk? And all of a sudden people started listening. After my first few calls with the new pitch, a local cafe said, come in for a meeting and let's discuss. And that was it. I landed my first client ever. Fast forward four months later, I had hired a few students within the university to help scale the business. And we were at about $15,000 per month in revenue out of my tiny little dorm room in university. And this is when one of my clients introduced me to dropshipping and I was sold immediately. With my newfound marketing skills, it wasn't long before I could create my first Shopify store and my first few ads to test. But I failed about three or four times before I finally got my first sale. And the product that I got my first sale on was these home workout resistance band sets. I remember waking up one morning to about $550 on my dashboard that I had made in my sleep. And throughout that day, just hearing more ching, ching, ching coming through. And that Shopify sound was like crack. And I became an addict. My first year at college got cut short because the pandemic rolled around. And I had to move back into my childhood bedroom at my parents' house for little did I know the next year. But as soon as I got home, I told myself when the world reopens, I'm coming out a completely different person. I became obsessed, clocking 16 hour days behind my computer screen every single day, launching three products a day sometimes, building multiple websites. I was doing everything myself, Facebook ads, Shopify, ripping creatives, creating ads, customer support, you name it. And after about 14 failed product tests, I made a few thousand dollars in sales, but overall I was still negative. And thankfully at this time, I was still working with a few clients in my agency that was bringing me in a decent amount of cash flow so I could continue to fund my dropshipping operation. And then I finally hit it big with my first winning product ever. It was a UVC sterilization wand. And we expanded that out and we started selling sterilization lamps and other related products. Now, the timing of this product was perfect. I was getting five or six X return on ad spend on cold traffic campaigns on Facebook. For those of you who know, that is ridiculous. And if I had my knowledge now and could go back in time, I could have scaled that to multiple, multiple seven figures in such a short period of time because everybody was freaking out about germs and this was the solution. They could could use UVC light to scan it all over their house on their high touch areas like phones, keys, wallets, and kill all bacteria and virus living on surfaces. But anyways, this is when I really started to make money. I was waking up to $5,000, $7,000 in a single day. I bought my first car or Range Rover in cash. I started going out, I started treating people. And I also, I didn't know how to act as an 18 year old that's finally tasting his first bit of real success. But because I was in lockdown, I couldn't do all that much. And as I started to make more money, besides just working throughout my entire day, I started to take a couple hundred dollars of profit every single night and for my own entertainment, start gambling in online crypto casinos. I'd win some, I'd lose some, but I really started it out as just a fun way to wind down at the end of a long, hard day of product testing and running my stores. Until one day, I woke up, did the usual refresh of my Shopify dashboard right next to my bed, and I saw a big, fat zero dollars. My Facebook feedback score had dropped below a 2.0, which basically means I couldn't advertise anymore. But on top of that, my Shopify store got a DMCA takedown notice for using stolen content that I didn't have the rights to. You see, I just grabbed content from the internet, threw it on my website, and that eventually led to my entire store getting shut down. On top of that, because of the low Facebook 
Facebook feedback score, I started to get chargebacks rolling through. So not only did I go from making thousands of dollars a day with this store to losing hundreds of dollars a day in chargebacks and refunds. And then, <laughs> things took a turn for the worse. My dad ended up in emergency hospital. His chronic illness that he'd been battling for the past 15 years had gotten worse. His lungs were falling apart and he was in bad shape. I know you're probably sick and tired of hearing this, but uh, seriously, you need to keep fighting. Um, our family will crash and burn without you. Uh, you're the leader and hero for all of us. And I just wanna say I'm so unbelievably lucky um, that I'm the son of such an amazing man. And your confidence rubs off on me every single day and gives me strength, strength and courage to um, face all situations in life. And I know that I'm going to have that with me uh, for the rest of my life. So please uh, keep fighting for us. I love you. I remember taking trips every single day up and down from the hospital to visit him. All the while I was losing money, my business was falling apart, but I was upholding this facade to him, to my mom, to everybody around me because how could I not? I mean, I finally started to make it and I was doing well and people around me were realizing that and they were finally trusting in me. And I couldn't just tell them, especially not now, my dad in the hospital, that I was a failure and I was losing money. So I maintained my facade. I kept buying things and helping out the family while my dad was in the hospital, driving up and down in my fancy Range Rover and Prada shades, buying food for the family. But on the inside, I was mentally unwell with my dad in the hospital. And on top of that, with everything that was going on, I had really felt like I was letting myself down. And on top of that, I was too much of a coward to tell anybody in my life what was going on. And then I turned to gambling. And what was once just a fun end of the night activity for me became a bad addiction that I couldn't get rid of. I was losing hundreds of dollars a day and then thousands of dollars at night from the online crypto casinos. Until one night, I found myself down to my last $250 in the account. My dad's conditions were worsening and on the outside, I was still pretending to be this hotshot to everybody around me. And I lost it. I completely broke down. I didn't know what to do. I felt the exact same feeling that I'd once felt before when I got expelled from school and I lost my soccer career. I was a failure, a complete flop, and I had just proved to myself the second major time in my life that I was incapable of doing what I really wanted. And what did I do? I took my last $250, turned it into Bitcoin, and loaded it straight up on the online gambling site. I knew I was down bad. I, I knew my life was over. This was my new complete rock bottom. And after I spent the last of my precious dollars gambling, I was gonna go to the hospital, and I was gonna tell my dad, my mom, everything, the gambling, the losing money, and I was gonna look them in the eye and tell them that their son was a failure. Now, for some reason that I still can't explain, on the gambling website, this time I didn't play my usual blackjack or crash, but this new game popped up and you know, you, you deposit your funds and you get a small sliver of a spinny wheel. And when that wheel spins, whoever's you know sliver it lands on gets the entire money of the whole pot. So it's kind of like roulette, a little bit different because you're playing against every single player who deposits money into this game. I was just like, screw it. I just put my whole 250 into that and it came out as this tiny little sliver on this big wheel. And I didn't realize, but we were playing for a much higher amount, so there was much, you know, larger entries in there. And I was like, what did I just do? I'm never gonna win this. I got up from my computer, hands in the head. I was pacing up and down in my room, just wondering when I'm gonna go to the hospital and do this, what's next with my life? And so many questions raced through my mind. And then out of the corner of my eye, I see this wheel spinning. And I see my part of the wheel, my tiny little section, getting closer and closer to where it needs to go. And I start to get a little bit closer and I see the arrow on this wheel landing right on my tiny section. I couldn't believe it. 11,500 US dollars had just been deposited into my crypto account. And from that moment, I knew that that was a God-given gift for me to get my shit back together. I told myself I wouldn't gamble anymore. I've got way too lucky already. I'm gonna take all this money and I'm gonna keep pumping it into finding my next winning product. And this time I'm not gonna make the same mistakes that I made on my last store and I'm gonna scale it even higher. I did it before, I'll do it again. This time I'm smarter, I've learned from my mistakes and I'll make my parents proud. And on top of that, I'm not gonna stop until I become a millionaire. I told myself that when my dad gets out of the hospital, I'm gonna make sure that he can focus on his health for the rest of his life and my parents won't have to worry about finances. There was a newfound fire underneath my ass that burned brighter than ever before. I felt it with every bone in my body. This was my time to take over. After a horrible month long stay in the hospital, my dad finally got released. And ever since he's been getting better and actively focusing on his health. Six months later, I touched my first first million dollars in revenue. And one year later, I officially became a millionaire. 
this is where the next chapter begins. Ever since I was a little kid, I'd always loved the idea of YouTube. I mean, I could sit down, turn a camera on, create something that will inspire, impact, provide value, teach, or just straight up entertain somebody else on the other side of my camera lens. I grew up with YouTube and having already failed on multiple different YouTube channels that I started throughout my life, I told myself the one day when I have a story valuable enough to share, when I have enough information and value to provide, I will start a channel and I will be successful. So I was a 19, 20 year old kid that became an online millionaire in like two and a half years. I figured, yeah, hell yeah, I have something valuable enough to talk about. Let me finally start my YouTube channel. Let's make this a success. At first I struggled to get more than 100 views on a video. All my friends and family, everybody around me, same old, same old, telling me, stick to what you're good at, don't do this, this isn't really your skill set. this isn't your expertise, you're already doing well over here, just focus on that. There was a million reasons for why I should stop, but I knew at this point in my life for certain that to keep getting back up and to keep fighting meant more to me than anything else. And if I want something bad enough, there is no doubt in my mind that I can now get it. I made a rigid posting schedule. I told myself that no matter what, I had to upload once a week every single Friday and each video had to be better than the last. I then said that after 50 uploads and after one year of being on YouTube, I'll analyze the entire channel and see if it still makes sense for me to continue the stream or to just cut it there. One year later, I grew to around 50,000 subscribers. I was even starting to make thousands of dollars a month from sponsors, affiliates, AdSense revenue, and so on. And I knew I had to keep this going. This was going to work. Two years later, I had over 250,000 subscribers, have made easily over a million dollars from ad revenue, sponsorships, affiliates. And on top of all that, I had the dream life. I bought my dream car, which at the time was a performance Tesla, matte black wrap, white interior. I bought my first Rolex, a few other nice pieces of jewelry, had ultimate time, location and financial freedom. I could give back and provide for my family and friends. Go on vacation whenever I wanted. I even cut my parents a six-figure check and I felt on top of the world until I wasn't. I believe I let my successes get to my head at this point in time. And I wasn't prioritizing my time effectively in other areas of my life. I was, you know, going partying on vacations around the world. I was letting down some friends and I even lost a long-term relationship. And even though I still had everything, I felt like I had become this person that wasn't me. It wasn't who I truly was on the inside. I was living somebody else's life by chance, a stroke of luck. I mean, sure, there was extremely hard work involved, but this wasn't me. Yes, my parents were okay now, but I wasn't spending much time with them. And my mom even kept saying to me, she thinks I'm going insane. They didn't care about any of my material successes and fancy watches. It was clear to me, well, clear to me now, that they just wanted to spend time with their son. And that's when I really realized that I needed to make a change. I needed to learn. I was young, although, you know, financially successful. Other aspects of my life were suffering and I didn't know what I was doing. And what did I do? I booked a one-way ticket to the farthest place on the planet that I could think of. I moved to Australia, figure shit out on my own, find out who I really was, meet new people, broaden my perspectives, and learn so much more about the world. When I got there, I was determined to get my life back on track and get my priorities straight. But I ended up just meeting a bunch of party people and going out and clubbing and going on fancy dates and going back to the casinos and gambling again. Basically, I just found a whole new group of people to do degenerate activities with on the other side of the planet. And I was lost, quite frankly, unfulfilled and wondering if this was all that life had in store for me. And then I began to question if taking the lesser walk path of ultimate financial success at a young age is even worth it, or if I could go back in time and just follow the route my parents once initially set me down. Felt like nobody could relate or understand what I was going through or my problems because after all, I'm a 21 year old millionaire, so I kind of felt bad talking about them anyway. Now, luckily during this time, I met a very good friend who genuinely cared about what I was going through. But more importantly than that, he could relate to my situation and understand. He had someone that had already went through similar things that I was going through in terms of chasing money and status from a young age. And at that current time, he was in a similar position to me in life. He had lost a long-term relationship and a lot of things that meant a lot to him because of the life that he chose. He became a best friend of mine, like a brother to me. And little by little, we helped each other get back on the right track, prioritizing our health, our families, having deep and open conversations with each other that enlightened us and helped us truly figure out who we were at our core, what we wanted in this life and not what we thought that we wanted. And trust me, the two are very, very different things. And so although there were some major bumps in the road, I actually did end up leaving Australia six months later with the clarity that I initially set out to get 
from that journey. I got into journaling, I formed healthy habits, I became a better time manager, and I started to stick true to my values and my integrity. And from there, everything changed. I built a much better balance for myself, in some ways moving slower to go faster. I started playing the long game and even started to smell the roses and enjoy the simple things along the way. And yes, over a year later, today at 23 years old, I have grown tremendously in my career. I bought a Lamborghini, I purchased a $2.7 million property in cash, I have a seven-figure investment portfolio, and three companies growing at rapid rates. But more importantly than all of that, I have an amazing, beautiful girlfriend that I fell in love with. I spend quality, undistracted, focused time on the people that truly matter in my life. I'm in good shape and probably the healthiest I've ever been, prioritizing my diet and what's going in my body every single day and I really am starting to feel a sense of peace in my life. I'm content with who I am, where I am, the present moment, but at the same time, I still am hungry for more and I'm driven towards a higher purpose and a higher goal. This is the duality that I had struggled so hard to find pretty much my entire life. And now I feel like I finally have it all figured out. But with all that said, I'm still young, I'm still inexperienced, I have a lot to learn and I'm ready for whatever challenges life is gonna throw at me next. And hopefully someday I'll be able to share them again with you right here on the channel. Thank you guys so much. I feel like breaking down my entire story over the past five years was a pretty difficult thing for me to get in front of the camera and actually do. But to know that this video is hopefully gonna reach thousands of people, inspire you to change your life or to learn from some of the mistakes that I went through in mine, I truly feel a great sense of pride and satisfaction just from wrapping up this video right now. Now, just before you head out and smash that like button, comment something down below, I wanna leave you with one last quote. And this is something that I like to remember every time I feel like I've made a big mistake or I've hit a new all-time low in my life. Whatever you're going through, no matter the pain, struggle, or sacrifice, it's all in God's plan and it's simply the universe testing and preparing you for all that's to come next in the next chapter of your life. And I feel like that quote has rang true for me in every single one of these experiences in my life. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Love you guys and I'll see you in a few days. Peace.